welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're looking at chapter 22 now, and there's a section we're going to go through here with a lot of laws that deal with property stuff. Let's read it out, and then we'll talk about it. So this is verses 1 to 4. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he shall pay five oxen for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. If the thief is caught while breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there will be no blood guiltiness on his account. But if the sun has risen on him, there will be blood guiltiness on his account. He shall surely make restitution. If he owns nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If what he stole is actually found alive in his possession, whether it an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. So we're looking at something here now that, again, is putting us into something that's very different from current Western law. Uh, we have today in our law this, uh, we incarcerate people, but the Hebrew plan is based on restitution. And there's not really a plan for a prison sentence here. Today I have Stewart's commentary, and it is just going to really open a light on some of this. So let me, let me go ahead and carry on just for briefly here. This is page... Uh, Stewart's Commentary on Exodus, this is page 500 and a little bit from 501. So listen to these two quotes uh, because they'll kind of set the tone for several mornings here. Restitution or residency is the heading. The laws in this section, uh, Exodus 22, 1 to 17, of the Covenant Code reflect that God envisioned no jail or prison system for punishing crimes in Israel. Confinement in a penal institution is the primary way modern Western societies punish such crimes as theft or sexual exploitation, but Israel's law did not include confinement penalties at all. Sometimes this omission, in quote marks here, omission, is treated only as the result of the fact that Israel was a people on the move, Sinai being only a temporary stopping place and prisons being virtually impossible in a mobile society. But this cannot be the primary reason for the lack of confinement penalties in the law, since the law looks forward in most places, not merely to the immediate future in the wilderness, but also to the time when Israel would be settled in the promised land and jails and prisons could certainly be constructed. There must therefore be another reason for the emphasis on restitution in cases of theft or property, destruction or premarital sex without a payment of a bride price rather than a residency rather than residency in a penal institution. The advantage of restitution over residency is at least fourfold. Here they come, one, two, three, four. One, it compensates the victims of a crime more generously and more immediately than is the case in modern Western societies. Two, it requires the offender to deal directly with the person he has offended and to face the effects of his crime on that person. Three, it permits a repentant offender to continue a productive life immediately upon making restoration. And four, it does not require society to provide housing, food, and clothing for the duration of the offender's imprisonment. Now he goes on from here and he talks about a couple of uh, potential advantages to the modern system, but we're not going to worry about that here uh, because well, that's not or we're not doing a big exposition here. But let me give you now the second, second bit let me give you the second bit over here on uh, the next page, just one paragraph. Behind all the laws in this section is the simple principle that the person who causes someone else to lose something, whether personal property or real estate or money, by whatever means, from theft or merely neglect to bypassing the normal betrothal process, owes compensation to the person who has suffered the loss. The more intentional the means of deprivation, that is outright stealing, the higher the required restitution normally calculated in multiples of the value of the loss suffered. Simple neglect was to be compensated on whatever level the judge in the case required. If no culpability was evident, however, no compensation was required. Some of these laws were intended to remind the Israelites that in God's providence, some things just happened and were no one's fault and therefore did not require restitution. So I um, won't belabor all that any further, but uh, really interesting bits there, very alien to us, because in our world today, a prison, um, prison, you know, you have per imprison somebody and you have to pay for them and upkeep them and all that. And in that culture, it was all based on predominantly their on restitution. And the person, the offender would be able to continue to be a member of society, but he had to put things in order. So interesting bits here as we're looking at this. 
Um, all right, so looking here then at these first lines here, if you steal an ox or a sheep, uh, slaughter or sell it, you pay five oxen for the ox or four sheep for the sheep. So you, I want you to recognize that in restitution, you uh, here you have, you give back the, the original item you stole. And then on top of that, uh, so let's say you stole the one ox, because that's what we have in verse one, one ox. You have to give the one ox back. That's like at the starting line. That's the first thing. And then you have to pay five more oxen for the ox, four sheep for the sheep. So you, you restore that which was taken. That's restitution. And on top of that, then you pay the penalty. So this is an incentive not to do such a thing. Another piece that's quite interesting to me here is uh, how highly value property is valued in the Bible. And notice here that um, you actually have capital punishment here. If the thief breaks in at night and he's caught and he's actually killed in the process, the, the person who killed him is not guilty. But notice that if he breaks in during the day, then he is not, you can't really do the capital execution on him. So again, during the daytime, you could figure out who it is because you could see, but at night you might, uh, in defending your situation, you might you might wind up actually taking a life. So we have these uh, very interesting piece, how highly God values life, even here the life of the criminal person, so that in the daytime, you are not to kill that person in defense of your property. So again, here, uh, different in some respects from modern law, uh, again, lifting the value of the individual and also kind of keeping him included in the society, even though he's got to correct his, his giant disastrous mistakes. Uh, so you see, yeah, if the sun has risen, verse three on him, there was no blood guiltiness in his account, he will make restitution. But uh, then if he, if he can't make, if he can't pay, then he goes into that six years of kind of indentured servant thing that we've, we've talked about here in previous mornings. So uh, if you find it in his possession, verse four, uh, then he pays double, okay? So that kind of, you know, he hasn't actually finished whatever dealing he has with it yet, but uh, he is, it, you can see there's an, ins you've caught him in the act, so to speak, red-handed. And so there you have it here. So very interesting, the differences between Hebrew law and Western law, modern Western law, different in terms of how it deals with the offender, also different between how it deals with the victim. In modern law, uh, the victim is kind of like, well, the victim, but yeah, at least, you know, that person's in prison somewhere. But in Hebrew law, there's a lot more direct interaction and correction that happens. And so the victim is actually, comes out, I think, better in Hebrew law. And the offender comes out actually better, I think, in Hebrew law, don't you? So anyway, interesting business here as we're into this section, dealing with a lot of different property crimes. And interesting too about the how highly valued even the life of the criminal is here. He is not to be killed if he's caught during the day. Uh, it is not allowed. You cannot do that. God uh, is giving some very interesting pieces on how things would work. All right, we'll just leave it there and uh, we'll comment some more tomorrow morning as we carry on with the next verses. See you then.